Chichi Buichi Mo. Just the one shot. We allowed more. <coughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Welcome, guys. We're in Shoreditch, London. Checking out our top 10 bars in London, whiskey bars that is. We're at the uh, Bull in a China shop. Bull in a China shop is actually named after my father. In England, Bull in a China shop is a saying. So my father was a little bit of a in a China show. This awesome barman here is going to bring us a couple of nice Japanese whiskies to try. So, Japanese whiskey, far more akin to like your Scotch uh, whiskies rather than your Irish, so a lot of them, or pretty much all of them, will be double distilled rather than your triple distilled. This one is that is quite a good example of what we mean by this movement, this Japanese whiskey. They've got the Central Japanese Alps here, and they've also got the Southern Japanese Alps here. And these guys are on a little plateau, sort of in between. Yeah, there's no need for water, because like, it's a blend, obviously, so it's a bit lighter, easier drinking, nice one to start off with. Whoa, I had the secrets there. Nah, 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 nah. Cheers. 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 Oh, is she? That's so tasty. That's very good. So, why not? Really tasty. Top three in London according to evening standards in 2018. Evening standards know their whiskey, so. <laughs> I tell you what though, it's definitely one of the top old fashions I've ever had. Yeah, like, while, while visually it's a, uh, it's, I mean it's obviously jet black because of the deactivated charcoal from the from the coconut. No, that's fine. Okay, one. Ah, oh, beautiful. <laughs> the tea is so obvious as well. It's great. Normally when you have these tea infusion things, you're like, ah, oh, can't really taste the tea, but I can. Well, That's one of the best old fashioned oh, right. sure, right. delicious. We've been to the Dead Rabbit, we've tried the best Irish coffee in the world according to most people and I couldn't disagree with them, it's the best Irish coffee I've ever had up until this point. We're now in a place called the Bull in the China Shop in London and they do a phenomenal Irish coffee, we're told. So right now he's making the Irish coffee and we're going to see what it's like. So what I like about what he's doing right now and he's working it is he's taking that, normally you take a cream, a lot of people just take cream straight out and pour a syrupy cream, like a, a kind of a wet cream over, but if you give it a bit of a whip like he's doing now, not overly whip where it's just super thick by the spoon, but enough to where it'll just sit on top properly and it's cold, just coming off. That's the perfect consistency of cream for an Irish coffee. But they have these beautiful glasses that allow your hand not to get burned while the coffee's nice and warm inside. How much is this? One to ten. One to ten. It's, it's up there. Let me, <laughs> let me take another sip. Lovely. That's tasty. Ooh, I like that. Very tasty. Beautiful. The temperature of the coffee is so uh, doing the whipped cream so it's melting a little bit. We're about to try one of the most expensive whiskies on the shelf, the Chichibu. Uh, this is the London edition, 2018. There's no age statement on this whiskey, correct? Which is good, which I like, because I don't want to know what age it is, I want to taste it. I want to know a little bit more about maybe the barrel that it sat in. Uh, do we know anything about how it was finished or matured? No, I'm really sorry. No, but I'm going to be honest with you. Good. We don't want to know, we'll taste. <laughs> Now, why is Chichibu so much more on the price point for you guys? They've got a bit of a long history. So the owner, his dad actually owned a distillery company. They started to make whiskey sort of back in the 80s, and I believe that they closed the factory down. But there were still quite a few barrels, about four to five hundred barrels that they still had available. And then for the next 20 years, the son of the owner of that distillery company, he spent a lot of money trying to keep them where I was moving them about Japan. So then when he first um, started making his own distillery, Chichibu, back in about 2005, they started to use some of those older barrels uh, to start making their own whiskey again.
Yoichi. Now, if anyone ever likes their sort of Scotch whiskey and wants to try Japanese whiskey, I always suggest people trying this one first. It's a really nice stepping stone to get into Japanese whiskey. Now, the reason I always pick it is that it is still very, very smooth like Japanese whiskey, but there's also a little bit of peatiness to it. Now, one of the reasons for that is that the gentleman that designed it, a gentleman called Masataka Takatsuru, he spent a bit of time in Scotland for two years. He went there in 1918, went to Glasgow University, ended up going to a couple of distilleries in Scotland, so stuff like Springbank and Campbelltown, and then coming back two years later with his wife Rita. This whiskey! I love it. Yeah, that was a bit better, wasn't it? Now, Hakushu. Now, these are like the rivals to Nika. So Nika are your two largest uh, sort of distilleries or distillers even. Now, this Hakushu is their second distillery. The first distillery was the Yamazaki distillery, which opened in 1923. Um, and then they opened this one in 1973. And actually on the non statement it says on there as well. This is a, a really, really, really good Japanese whiskey. It can be enjoyed by all, not too harsh, easy drinking, there's some great flavor profiles. Like you said, there is a lot of that, you know, vegetation type rainforest um, smells coming through. There's a lot of that. Uh, a lot of citrus as well in this particular whiskey. On nearly every list that you Google on the top whiskey bars in London, you guys are always in there. How does that feel? It's pretty cool in four years. Yeah, I think for us, it's nice to happen, for it to happen very organically. Uh, I think that's the most important thing for us, you know. Everybody who works here has a passion and a love for the liquid. And I think hopefully that shines and shows in people's reviews and so forth. But it's nice to be written about. Wow, well that was an experience. It was an experience. It was a great experience. Good bartenders, good drinks, liked it a lot. Yeah, I would give them a thumbs up on all the core. The Absolutely. selection of whiskey was great. We knew going in there it wasn't going to be heavily global whiskey. It was more dominant on Japanese whiskey. But they have gone a little bit more worldly. They've got a little bit more Scotch, a little bit of Irish. They've even got a nice little bit of Korean whiskey in there, which is lovely to try. Yeah. Knowledge of staff, selection of whiskeys, cocktails, yeah. which is what we rate a lot of places on. We haven't tried the food, but everything else was an absolute thumbs up. Yeah. Definitely a reason why it's in the top 10 whiskey bars in London that deserves it. It's diverse, something for everyone there. Yeah. And I'm very happy. I'll be coming back for that rotisserie chicken, absolutely. <laughs> rotisserie. Rotisserie.